Hey guys, welcome to my new movie collections update video for the month of August 2015. As always guys, thanks you, thank you for joining me. Uh, I really appreciate it. Give this video a thumbs up if you like what I have to show you in my comments in each of, these one of um, each one of these videos that I have to show you. Send some comments guys, some of your other recommendations or things that you think I should be looking out for. And let's get started, alright? So I got a nice little selection of films that I've watched recently. Again, a lot of these things are like a few months old already guys, so... You have to pardon me. I had a, a lot of things happen in my life right now recently within you know the past couple of weeks or so. So it's been pretty pretty exciting for me. Uh, so I might tell you a little bit more about that in a separate video if I choose to. But anyway, guys, let's get started with this video, right? So the first film that I have to show you is The Kingsman with uh, Colin Firth, uh, Samuel L. Jackson, and uh, Michael Caine. And I'm going to start off by saying right off the bat, this might be a first for a lot of these videos, is that... Um, I thought it was okay, but I really didn't like this movie that much. And the primary reason is because even though that I, I know that it's supposed to be, you know, spoofing on a lot of the old traditional James Bond films in terms of, you know, again, secret agents, all the, the fancy gadgets, you know, the, uh, the coolish looking, you know, villains and henchmen that are, that are part of this film, you know, all that is, is all fine and dandy and great. But after a while, I just kind of felt like a lot of the things that were happening action wise and even some of the, uh, the, uh, the visuals and some of the um, the gadgets that we're using, we just made the film feel a little bit more cartoonish than what I would have liked it to have been. So, I mean, that doesn't mean that I didn't enjoy it. I did like it, but I just really didn't love this movie the way I thought I would. I know a lot of people, you know, uh, looked at this film and said this, this movie was actually really good, you know, but I, I just didn't, didn't feel that much enamored by it anyway. But honestly, guys, I mean, that's just my opinion. A lot of you might disagree with me on that. But anyway, guys, you know, it was a good flick, but, you know, again, wasn't one of my personal favorites. Um, so that's pretty much it on that. I'm not really going to go too much into the, the story behind this. I mean, it's, it's just like a typical, um, you know, classical James Bond film, just trying to stop, you know, the uh, the bad guys from unleashing all hell on Earth. Let's put it that way. That's pretty much what all it is. All right. So the next film that I have to show you is this film called Laggies with Keira Knightley and Chloe Grace Moretz. And I have to say that I really enjoy this movie a lot. I remember watching the trailers of it. And again, I love Keira Knightley, you know. And I'm, I'm, I'm a pretty big fan of Chloe Grace Moretz as well. And Sam Rockwell too, who does another fine performance in this film. And, you know, the basic premise of this film is that uh, Keira Knightley's character is at a point in her life where she's trying to kind of figure out or reevaluate, you know, who she is. The, the circles that she's involved with, you know, or the people in the circles that she's in, you know, wh what did they add or what did they take away from who she thinks she is or who she wants to be? And especially since, you know, she grew up with a lot of these people, you know, pretty much all her life. So it's kind of like her reflecting on a lot of things that are happening. And she kind of finds a bit of solace in Chloe Grace Moretz's character, who plays this teenager who lives with a single parent, which is her father, who's played by Sam Rockwell. And they kind of form a bond with each other in terms of trying to figure out, you know, how the other one be behaves the way they do and what they're looking for in life. So it's kind of like they see each other. Like, uh, um, Keira Knightley sees her herself as, as a, a younger person in Chloe Grace Moretz's character and vice versa. And, you know, it's, it's interesting, you know, how that develop, that relationship develops and what it leads to towards the end. Is there's a very nice, interesting message that I really like at the end of this film. And it's kind of like, you know, again, do you like exactly the circles that, you know, or the people that you are with, you know, towards the end? You know, the people that, that make up your circles or your bubbles. Do you like all those people that are in there? You know, do, do they add anything or do they take away? You know, and I really appreciated that. It was, it was really cool. I really like this movie a lot, guys. So I definitely say check it out. Laggies. A lot of fun. The next film that I have to show you, of course, is Paddington from Deepest Darkest Peru. That's right, guys. <laughs> um, I remember watching the uh, the old stop motion animation uh, shorts of Paddington and thinking that these, these were pretty cool. It's a bear, you know, and um, they kept a lot of the original uh, story elements for the film adaptation here. And I have to say that I really did like this movie a lot. I mean, I didn't know what to expect from it. You know, I, I, I know Paddington, but it's not like I really know everything about Paddington, even from the old, you know, stop motion animations. I actually never really read any of the original short stories that were created of Paddington or that are based on the Paddington Bear character. So this is the first time that I'm really being introduced to the background of Paddington Bear through this film. And I have to say that I really appreciate it a lot, guys. It's really a lot of fun. It's it's a decent family film. You know, Paddington, you know, is the main character. You have Sally Hawkins is in it. Um, Nicole Kidman is in it. And uh, who else? I think the, there's some other characters in here that I can't remember off the back. 
But uh, those are the only ones that kind of like stick out to me right now off the top of my head as being kind of some of like the main actors in this film. And they all do a wonderful job. It's just seeing how, you know, the, the, um, the imagery, the, the film, com the, the, the composition of a lot of the shots were put together in order to make this film. Because it just feels like, a lot of times it feels like literally a storybook, you know, is popping open right in front of your eyes throughout the entire the entire film you know I, and i really like that about it it's, it's pretty colorful too and there are a lot of nice unique moments that kind of character you know that kind of characterize the character that's, that's kind of redundant to say that but you know they 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 flesh out the character of paddington being very curious but at the same time a little bit clumsy that kind of leads into a lot of the problems that he kind of gets himself into but finds a way to try to correct the issue you know or make up for the problem that he may have caused so it's really interesting i really found it you know to be a very really enjoyable film something that you can watch with the kids at home so definitely guys paddington's was a lot of fun guys the next film that i have to show you is ethan hawk in predestination now i remember watching the trailer for this and finding it to be pretty amazing especially for a time travel film and um, I didn't know what to expect from it, but just again, from the trailer, it actually looked pretty interesting just because, again, there was something going on in terms of trying to fix the past. And again, it always goes back to, it always goes back to my, my fondness of the Back to the Future films, which I truly enjoy, you know, especially the first one. And uh, this one, when I saw the trailer, kind of reminded me of it a little bit. But now watching the film in itself, I was like, wow, this movie, there was a lot of thought that was put into you know the the construction of the story for this film and uh, you know it's basically about Ethan Hawke trying to go back into the past to correct something that could ultimately affect him in the future so that's kind of like a basic basic premise but there's more involved in that basic premise that I don't really want to go into because it really reveals a lot about what's really going on in this film the one thing that I will say is that if anything, this movie reminds me of the myth of Sisyphus. That's a hint in terms of what this movie is really about. The myth of Sisyphus more than anything else. All right. And I'll even go as far as to say that this movie and the time travel element, the story is a lot better than Looper. Some of you might think I'm being very bold by saying that because I did like Looper also, although I kind of felt that the time travel aspect in the film was a little bit, you know, it lacked something in here. But this one, I believe, far surpasses that. So that's just my opinion, guys. Don't crucify me for it. But again, feel free to send me comments on what you think. But honestly, I really like Predestination a lot. All right. And hint on the Myth of Sisyphus thing in there, guys. Hint. All right. The next film or films that I have to show you because honestly they're, they're sequels are the Sleepaway Camp films 2 and 3, uh, Sleepaway Camp, Unhappy Campers, and Teenage Wasteland. Uh, I love these films a lot guys. Um, I have the first one so at this moment basically you can say I have the entire trilogy of the Sleepaway Camp films. As a matter of fact, uh, if I just pull this out pretty quickly, here they are. I have all three of these films. These are basically cult classics, guys. So if you ever get the chance to get these versions from Shout Factory or Scream Factory, I always get those two mixed up, but from one of those two, definitely get these because they're a lot of fun. They're really great films, but we're not talking about the first one because I already did that before, but we're talking about part two and three. And honestly, guys, I love these movies. You know, they're, they're not as dark as the original first one, but they do have their own charm. There's definitely lots of blood and gore. And... Uh, Pamela, Pamela Springsteen, I always keep tr mispronouncing her last name for some reason, I don't know why. Pamela Springsteen, hopefully, if you're watching, I apologize for, you know, for almost mispronouncing your last name. But um, she's in it, she's a lot of fun, she's cute, uh, you know, and she makes these movies what they are. So I really found them enjoyable. So I'm not really going to go too much into, into detail about this because if you guys understand the story of Angela Baker, the character in these films, you know, and especially if you saw the original video that I did on, on part one, then you guys know what the sequels are about. But it's just a continuation. And these two in particular are almost direct sequels to each other. They were almost filmed back to back. So it's about her character continuing her, you know, murderous exploits in these camps. 
and they're fun. There's, there's lots of you know unique, nice uh, uh, behind the scenes content and even interviews. The one thing that I thought was lacking about the, the interviews segments, the extras, that I always found very enjoyable about Scream Factory's re-releases of a lot of these old cult classics is that they always got a lot of the, the, the film actors to come back and talk about their experiences on the film. But the one thing that I felt that was lacking is that unfortunately they didn't get Pamela to come back to you know do interviews about her experiences in this film. So that's the kind of thing that kind of I felt I felt a little let down by that because I found out you know I was hoping that maybe they would talk to her and she would give us her opinion and her experiences about it being in these films because I really found them enjoyable and you could see that she was really having a lot of fun being in these films too you know when you look at the behind the scenes footage as well but honestly guys just to have them in Blu-ray DVD copies with these nice unique covers is is, is all all more worth it for me guys so if you can get these versions definitely do so guys get it all right. And the last film that I have to show you for this video, guys, is this film called These Final Hours. I remember uh, I first uh, found out about this film through a trailer, through another movie that I was watching, and I felt like, wow, this, is, this actually looks really good for an end of the world type of film. And the basic premise is, uh, I believe it's, it's, uh, it's either a solar flare or a huge meteor crash hits the earth. So there's this big, huge wave of fire that's pretty much engulfing the entire surface of the planet. And we're left with the last seven hours uh, before it hits Australia. Australia, And we're left with this main character who decides that he's going to go to a party to kind of just do whatever the hell he wants at this party during the last seven hours before everything pretty much just gets turned to dust. And he stumbles ap across this little girl who's trying to get back to her father. And uh, he decides to help her get, get back to her parents. And the whole story revolves around him trying to get her back to his parent and all the things that happen along the way in terms of how he tries to save her from danger. The main character spends a lot of time, you know, trying to rationalize why he's, you know, taking time out of his way to help this little girl. And he kind of discovers a lot, you know, by trying to help this little girl about a lot of the mistakes that he's made in life, especially, a, you know, a huge mistake that he makes very early in the film as soon as we're introduced to his character. And um, he realizes that it was a huge mistake and that he should really go back to try to correct this one error, you know, which involves another character that we're introduced to very early in the film as well. And uh, it, 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 it really hits, you know, a, a really deep emotional part, at least for, you know, for me, again, watching it. It really hit an emotional core in terms of, again, the last moments on Earth. What would you do? Would you blow it away as to just take your own life? Because you know that's going to happen eventually, but rather than waiting, just do it. Or do you just blow it away, you know, doing drugs, whatever, you know. Or do you spend it with loved ones? Or do you, do you spend it trying to help people as best you can, even though you know that, you know, there's no hope, you know. So a lot of these things were, were, are kind of explored in this film. And I really kind of enjoy that the writers actually took that, that idea and really tried to flesh it out as best they could, you know, within the film itself. And it, I really appreciate the end, the end message that was left in this film. It's 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 really um, a powerful thing, you know, that that, that just kind of hits you and grips you when, especially you know, towards the end of the film when you see that things are really just just gonna hit. So I really found this movie to be a lot of fun, guys. I really appreciate it. I really enjoyed it. You know, there was a lot in here that you can keep talking about even after you're done in terms of personal reflections and things of that nature. So definitely, guys, these final hours, check it out. You know, look for it. You know, it, it's definitely a purchase. I I, I definitely say you know, purchase and have it for your collection too, guys. All right. And that's pretty much it, guys. So again, I hope you enjoyed the films that I had to show you. I hope, you know, you appreciate it and also enjoy the comments that I had to say about most of these films. Tell me your comments, guys. What do you think about the things that I had to say about this, this film or any of these films that I had to show you? Give me your recommendations on other films, like I said before, that you think I'd be interested in watching. Uh, I'm keeping track of some other things, too, that I might be interested in purchasing or watching at some point. So I'll definitely, you know, they'll be in one of these videos eventually, guys. So, you know, as always, guys, you know, stay safe, keep watching films, and uh, I'll catch you next time. All right, guys? So take care.